On paper, a video game remake should completely and utterly invalidate the original product. With the amount of money and talent available in the game industry today, a remake should be better than the original product in every single way. In practice? We're lucky if it's even half as good as the original. In this video, we're going to talk about what it takes to make the perfect remake. We'll start with some god-awful remakes, make our way to some more mediocre remakes, before reaching the best of the best. There's plenty to talk about, so let's get right to it. Starting with... The Pokemon Series. It's really amazing what the Pokemon franchise can get away with. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver released in March of 2010, at least for us Westerners. And little did my child self know that as soon as I picked that game up, that I would be experiencing the absolute peak of Pokemon as a series. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are absolutely perfect remakes. Nearly everything from the original trilogy of games is present here. The only thing that didn't make it into the remake was the slot machine minigame, and that's because Europe had recently passed legislation preventing it from appearing. They also removed an NPC that gives you an egg, but it's a goddamn egg. I'm not gonna lose my mind over the removal of an egg. On top of preserving 99% of content from the original trilogy, Heart Gold and Soul Silver would then go on to add a ridiculous amount of content on top of that mountain of content from the original games. For example, the first Pokemon in your party now walks behind you, and when they're shiny, their sprite's shiny as well. A ton of legendaries that weren't obtainable in the original were made obtainable here as well. Even some that don't make sense, like Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, Latios, Latias? All Generation 3 legendaries that have no business being in a Generation 2 remake, but they included them anyway. And you wanna know why? Because it made the game better. This is what a remake should be. A remake should homogenize content across all versions. And by versions, I mean updated versions of the original game with additional content. In this case, even though they were making remakes of Pokemon Gold and Silver, they made sure to include content from Pokemon Crystal. And it makes sense. Why make a remake if you're not going to try and include everything people know and love about these games? Right? Right? Pokemon Diamond was one of the very first video games that I played, period. So when I realized that someday, even the games that I started out with would be remade, I got excited. I thought the games looked good already, but imagine if instead of the little chibi sprites, they were fully rendered 3D models. Sadly, I would have to keep imagining, because when Brilliant Diamond released on November 19th, 2021, I got this shit instead. <laughs> Pokemon BDSP are remakes of the DS games that came out in 2007. You wouldn't know it though just taking a look at them. Instead of going the way of, say, Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire with lankier 3D models that better fit the characters, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl decided to be a little too faithful to the game's original art. It doesn't look bad, but it also doesn't look like an upgrade. It's faithful to a fault. Faithful to a fault seems to be the trend for a lot of remakes these days. I don't know if Heart Gold and Soul Silver just spoiled me or something, but growing up, I always thought that remakes were supposed to be the complete package, and then some. I mean, they are reselling me a game I bought over a decade ago. After all, it is objectively less work to recreate a game than it is to make one from scratch. So why not compensate that easier workload by filling a remake to the brim with extra content to make the player even happier? Well, because they don't need to. As I was researching information for this video, I stumbled upon so many comments defending the state of these remakes. And it's not just this one Reddit thread either. Look at any forum your little mind desires, Discord, Twitter, whatever platform it may be, someone is going to defend the cost-cutting measures of a multi-billion dollar company. This is the issue. This is why video games today suck so much ass. Because no matter how bad you make a game, no matter how obviously you spit in the face of the consumer, they will still defend you. No medium of entertainment has a following more brain dead, more spineless, more lacking in self-control than gamers. And that's why so many companies are turning their attention towards making video games now. The people demand the lowest common denominator slop, and they're willing to fork over 60 bucks for a remake with less content than a game from 2008. It just doesn't add up that they'd go above and beyond with the 2010 remakes, then a decade later decide to do the bare minimum. After all the money they've earned, after all the experience they've accumulated, instead of making a better game, they make the bare minimum. The only conclusion I can come to is that consumers have gotten dumber. And hey, I'm not here to pretend that I'm a smart guy myself. I've purchased my fair share of mediocre games from shitty companies. Hell, I bought all these Pokemon remakes day one, but I also realized that I made a huge mistake buying the remakes day one. By buying these products, I basically told Nintendo, I will buy anything you make, so keep making shittier games, I'll buy them. Alright, this video is getting a little too off track. Let's turn our attention to a remake that I believe to be absolute perfection. A remake so memorable, so charming, so legendary, that people still talk about it 15 years later. Punch-Out Wii. 
Something I want to get out of the way immediately is that yes, remaking a 5 hour NES game is an easier task than remaking a full fledged RPG. But remember how I said earlier, I said a remake should make up for the easier development time by packing the game with as many extras as you can? Yeah, Punch Out Wii is like that. Punch Out Wii is what every remake should strive to be. For starters, there's zero reason to go back to Punch Out NES. Every fight from the original is here, and some, like Don Flamenco, even have an additional phase to their fight that was not present in the original. On top of all the original fights returning, a handful of new fights have been added, some completely original, and some adapted from the SNES sequel, Super Punch-Out. This is already exceeding what most people would expect from a remake these days. All the content, and then some. But the developers of Punch-Out Wii didn't think that Above and Beyond was enough, so you know what they did? They went and remade the game again. Once you complete the main game and become the Punch-Out Champion, you unlock Title Defense, a sequel within a remake. In this version of the game, you must defend the title belt from all your previous opponents, and they're pissed. Everyone in Title Defense has a new design, a new backstory, and an entirely revamped moveset. For example, when you beat Glass Joe, your first opponent, that was his 100th loss. And in the Punch-Out universe, your 100th loss means that you're legally entitled to protective headgear. As a result, Glass Joe's fight is a lot harder because you can't punch the guy in the head. So, if Glass Joe loses a hundred times and gets some protective headgear, does that mean... Oh yeah, if you somehow manage to accumulate a hundred losses in Punch-Out Wii, you unlock the protective headgear as well. If this isn't proof of the amount of soul this game oozes, I don't know what is. This is a completely pointless addition, something so stupidly arbitrary that nobody would have blamed the developers if they didn't include it. But you know what? They fucking did it anyway! Not because they had to, but because they wanted to. It might not be necessary, but the consistency of even the smallest details is why this is a 10 out of 10 game. As if title defense wasn't enough. This remake includes even more content on top of remaking the game twice. Ever wondered what Punch-Out would be like if it was a multiplayer game? Yeah, they did too, so they added multiplayer. It's not very good, but you know what? They did it. They managed to make the very first multiplayer version of Punch-Out. And even though it's extremely awkward to play since, you know, it's two guys trying to dodge each other's attacks most of the time, and not one giant opponent that telegraphs their attacks, it's still fun. It's still a bonus that they didn't need to add, but they did. I could go on and on and on about this game. They added an exhibition mode so you can practice against holograms of your previous opponents. They added an endurance test mode where you fight random opponents. They added Donkey Kong! Fucking Donkey Kong! Does your favorite remake have Donkey Kong? I don't think so! Punch-Out Wii is a goddamn masterpiece, an incredible achievement of a game. A shining example of what a remake is supposed to be. Proof that we're capable of developing games that play better, look better, sound better, all in a shorter time period than before. It represents the developers that actually care for the art of creating video games. Developers that aren't just cynical assholes looking to make a quick buck. Developers that love their craft and wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. And that's why it's so disappointing to see the types of remakes we get in 2024. Persona 3 Reload. Persona 3 is an amazing game that I adore, but I also understand that it's a very flawed game. I mean, you basically run up and down randomly generated hallways the majority of the game. Additionally, Persona 3 lacks a definitive version. There's certain content exclusive to the PlayStation Portable version of the game, and certain content exclusive to the PlayStation 2 version of the game. So you can imagine that when a Persona 3 remake was announced, I was thrilled. Finally, a definitive version of the game with better graphics, better music, and... Persona 3 Reload would, in fact, not be the definitive version of Persona 3. In addition to the lack of homogenization, Reload would also go on to replace every single voice actor from the main cast. More like Stupe Ace Defective. More like Stupe Ace Defective. And remix every song from the original game. Some for the better, and some for the worse. Yeah, see, you're playing it like this. When ordinarily it goes like this. Persona 3 Reload is not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not a great remake either. All of its original content is great, the new songs are awesome, the new interactions with the male party members are awesome, but outside of that, it's painfully mediocre. They didn't make a remake to please fans of the original, they made a remake because it's safe. Why bother making a new entry to the series when they could just modernize an old one? Save money by reusing assets from Persona 5, save money by not having to make an entirely original game, and hell, while you're at it, save money by making the game in Unreal Engine instead of its own dedicated engine. This is the issue with the modern day remake. They're not made out of a passion to recreate the original product with modern day technology, but instead created because it's a safe, easy way to make some money. And while you could argue, duh, all companies 
companies want to do is guarantee profit. You can still do that while honoring the source material. Hell, I just got done sucking off Punch-Out Wii because of how honorable it was to the source material. I've also bought Punch-Out Wii twice, once on Wii, another time on Wii U, and I'll gladly buy it again on Switch because it's just that fucking good, and I want to support the developers that made that game. Persona 3 Reload though? Hell no, I'm not buying this shit again! Persona 3 Reload is a $70 remake with less content than Persona 3 Fez, a game that came out 17 years ago and released with a price tag of $40. Oh, and before any of you wise guys come out there trying to push up your glasses and say, eh, well, clearly you aren't accounting for inflation. 40 bucks in 2007 would be 60 bucks today. So even when you account for inflation, this game is overpriced as shit with its $70 price tag. But wait, that's not all! Remember how I said Persona 3 Reload lacked the content that would make the game definitive? Well, don't worry, Atlas announced that they'll be updating Persona 3 Reload to add the answer, a bonus episode only present in the PlayStation 2 version of the game, as paid DLC. Also, you don't even get it free if you bought the deluxe version of the game, or the premium version of the game, it's a completely separate DLC from all that. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man, what the fuck? The fact that Atlas announced this DLC one month after the game was released, and the fact that this DLC already has gameplay footage and animated cutscenes means that it's almost ready. They could have easily included this in Persona 3 Reload from the start. But why do that when you could charge $70 for the base game, then charge 15 bucks for the DLC, and make even more money? And this is what I mean by voting with your wallet. Companies are only going to get away with this if you, yes, you, the one watching the video, allow them to get away with it. If you continue to buy overpriced, incomplete games, companies will continue to sell you overpriced, incomplete games. So, you want to know how you can make a difference? Just buy good games. That's it. It's really that simple. You don't need Persona 3 Reload. You can get the original experience, as intended, for much, much cheaper, emulating Persona 3 Fez. Or, hey, if you're not interested in playing Persona 3 anyway, how about picking up a good remake instead? I heard Resident Evil 4 was great, so why not give that a try? Or if it's RPGs you prefer, how about Super Mario RPG? That game just got an amazing remake too, so if you want to scratch that RPG itch, there you go. Stop defending these companies. Start voting with your wallets. Brand loyalty benefits absolutely Absolutely nobody. It makes companies content with declining quality, and it makes consumers content with mediocre products. And if there's anything life has taught me, it's that you shouldn't settle for mediocrity. Change the world. Bye -bye, message. Goodbye. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you hated the video, explain why in the comments section below. Either way, I'm gonna go play some video games. Peace.